Glittering in the warm April sun, the lower Patuxent River appears a tranquil tributary. But underwater, things are murkier. Schools of fish that don't belong here are wreaking havoc on the habitat. The Maryland Department of Natural Resources is working on the problem. Today, DNR biologists Mary and Tim Groves are setting out to tag, track, and thus better understand and manage the invasive blue catfish. Blue catfish are a fairly, what we would consider a fairly recent invasive species to show up in Maryland. And in this case, it took about 10 to 20 years for them to start showing up in any great numbers. They took off in the Potomac River and really you know, increased their numbers. And now we're finding them in every tributary in Maryland of the Chesapeake Bay. The Groves have been studying the blue catfish explosion for more than a decade. But the tagging program is new, a way to gather more details than ever before about these voracious predators. The blue catfish get very large. They can grow over 100 pounds. They'll eat just about any fish that they come across. And because they do grow so large and because they are very prolific and because they've spread to quite a huge range of habitat, um, these fish have the ability to really um, impact in a negative way all the other aquatic species that are in the water. They were introduced intentionally to a few rivers in Virginia in the 80s for sport fishing but their tolerance for salinity proved higher than expected, and they soon spread to the Chesapeake Bay and other tributaries, like the Patuxent. Our goal today is to try to get at least six blue catfish that are um, big enough to tag, and typically something like these pilings that we're gonna come up on, any bit of wood or debris or a tree that's hanging down, is a really good place for fish to, to stick around because it breaks the current. You can go ahead and swing them around. If you have a fish species that just has no problem feeding on whatever's in the water, it seems natural. You would be more concerned and need to find out more about where that fish is going, where it's spawning, what it's eating, how much it's eating. Through data collected from the tagging program, Mary and Tim hope to learn where the fish congregate, how far they travel, and where they spawn. Ultimately, they want to understand the blue cat's impact, and most importantly, help fishermen hook this invasive species. This is just part of the electrofishing unit. This part goes in the water, and the current flows from the generator through the wires up through these arms. This is no ordinary fishing expedition. This is a specially outfitted electrofishing research vessel that has a shocking special effect to help net the fish. Here's one. Just stuns them temporarily. They're very, very sensitive to it. See the fish come up? Mary, there's a big fish in there. The electric current is set high enough to stun the fish, but not kill it. I'm going to set them in the tank. That looks like a big female. Here's a catfish, but it's a channel catfish. Goldfish is white perch. This is a channel catfish. This is not a native fish to Maryland, but it's been here since the 1800s. But uh, they don't get as near as large as a blue cat, and they've been accepted as pretty much um, naturalized in Maryland. And the way you can tell is if you look at this fin here, it's rounded. Here's the blue cat. You can see the anal fin here. It's more rectangular. There's more fin rays to it. You can see uh, it doesn't have the speckles on them. The eyes are more set on the side of the head. Mouth's a little larger, and the tail is not quite as forked. I think we've got enough fish. Okay. Back on land, the blue cats are prepped for surgery. Each will get an electronic monitor that will track their movements and provide information on their every move. This is a combination sonar and radio tag. That way then they can work both in the freshwater portion of the Tuxet, plus um, they can go down into higher salinity waters. 
Each fish is assigned a unique number that will allow researchers to track them over the next two years. Okie doke, he's good to go. A quick suture and they're ready for recovery. After the fish recover in the tank, we take them and release them right back into the boat ramp. Let them swim back to the river, wherever they want to go. We track them and we try to find out their location and uh, track their movements. I think we got one here, Ross. Early data show blue catfish have a large range, often traveling more than six miles in a single day. We found some areas that they, they, like, they prefer because they stay there a lot. Information that will ultimately help the blue catfish's only predator, humans, catch and eat this delectable menace. Just downriver, the town of Benedict is hosting a catfish tournament, where enthusiastic anglers from across Maryland are doing their part to help the watershed. Blue catfish is really, really good, and the more people eat it, then the more demand, and then watermen will go out and catch it. It's healthy to eat, you know, it's, it's safe to eat, and it tastes good, then hopefully that demand will go up and that will knock the population back. The only way that we can really control their numbers is to have people want to take them out of those river systems. We've seen in the past where, you know, the public's assistance um, can really make a big difference and cooperation with like our tagging program information that people put in, it can help us tremendously. The only catch, if it has a tag, leave it alone.